This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look, or should I say a re-look, re at the Millennial Farmer Map. This map you can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game mod hub. And as of the 1.0 re-re-re-release, this map can be available for all platforms. Now this map, as I have already implied, has been here, has been gone, has been back, has been gone, and now it's back again for PC. I understand it's been available for console for about two weeks now maybe, uh, but the listing as of today, March 25th, 2021, it is version 1.0 for PC, Xbox and PS4, PS5. So, I don't know how much has changed from the console version that came out a few weeks ago to the 1.0 version that we have now. All that I can say is it's highly recommended if you've been playing on this map and it's now showing in the mod hub that you need an update, it is best to start a new save game. Now, let's read a little bit of the description. Welcome to the Millennial Farmer map based in Minnesota, USA. The Millennial Farmer, Zach Johnson, is a fifth generation farmer who has spent his life growing up, working, and learning on his family farm. He's also grown to be one of the most popular farmers on YouTube, giving viewers a chance to see what it's like to be the Millennial Farmer. Now, it's your turn to take control and find out if you can make, make it as a Millennial Farmer. Now, this map is seasons prepared and i do believe yes there is a seasons geo uh, lowry minnesota geo that is available uh, there's also a shelby montana geo uh, that is available from mappers paradise and i believe that one is specifically to their walkers farm map but the, there is a lowry minnesota geo which would be for the millennial farmer map I will say, I do want to go back, and I want to go to mods here. I'm going to go to installed, and I'm going to show you that we have seasons here. This is installed, 1.3.2.0. It is not showing that it needs an update because, well, I know this cleared. Giants testing. I am very, could be very, very suspicious about loading up this map with seasons with this release. Because, well, you're going to see here in a moment. We have Lua errors related to seasons and the animal areas. And I believe it's mostly, as it says, related to the grazing aspect. So, yeah. Now, of course, I don't expect Giants to QA maps with Seasons, but I do check that when I do load up these maps for these map videos, and this is exactly what I saw. So, be forewarned, you may or may not have the grazing function on the sheep pen and the cow pen. I'm going to exit the game and I am going to then basically get back to where we normally start these videos and continue on without seasons. But I did want to show you that I did want to show you that I'm not using some hacked up version of seasons. This is straight off the mod hub current version. I'm getting those Lua errors. Go ahead and load on into the map for real this time. Go ahead and load up the mods we typically use when we take a look at these videos or at these maps. Now this map does indeed have a seasons mask 
and it does indeed have a custom soil map. So we're going to take a look at the soil map here in a little bit. You can see, obviously, since we did not load this map up with seasons, we're not getting any of those seasons Lua errors at the moment. Now, this horse issue being cooked at runtime, that is something that is kind of a known issue with respect to horses and consoles in general. That's not that big of a surprise. Nothing really to be overly worried about on that. We load in the map here, kind of at the front door of the Millennial Farmer farmhouse. But the sleep trigger is not here at the front door. The sleeper is, or the sleep trigger is at the back door. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map. Zoom on out, and here we have a pretty, pretty basic map. Large fields. We've got 15, sorry, 16 total fields, but we've got some pretty big ones going on here. Let's take a look at the lands area. You see, we start out by only field three, 37 hectares in size, $2.4 million, 100 acres in size. We also have the main farm here, $405,000, 16 acres in size. Field 14, 41 hectares are 111, sorry, 111 acres, $2.6 million. Field 15, 31.9 hectares. 85.9 acres in size. Our smallest field looks like it's going to be area one, just 12 acres or 3.77 hectares, and that is $293,000. We do have a pig farm down here that we can buy for $347,000, and then the rest of the animals are over here. We've got the cows and the horses for $779,000, and then we have the sheep for $83,000. There is a biogas plant, which we do own at the start, which is part of the main farm, again, for $405,000. Now, we can buy the lake. Don't really know why we would want to buy the lake, but we could buy the lake for $1.9 million, should we so wish. A little bit of forestry action going on up here for $144,000. And we can buy the cell points here to the northwest. Got a fair bit of grass over here, $627,000. And I would say a lot of these, a lot of these areas are off the edge of the map up here still. We're going to take a look at that when we get around to our drive around. We do have all of our standard crops available to us here on Farm Sim 19. Let's go ahead and load up the custom soil map. And wow, that is a rather colorful soil map indeed. We don't have too much silty clay scattered around the map, but we do have a fair bit of loam and sandy loam. A little bit of loamy sand scattered around. A very, very interesting soil map. And we do have two main sell points for the bulk of our crops, the Grain Buyer and Lowry CHS. We do have two sell points for our root crops. The biogas plant will take our potatoes and sugar beets as well as the de-root sell point. We do have the spinnery for our cotton and wool. And the dairy will accept our milk and eggs. Wood chips are going to be down at the sawmill. And the biogas plant and CCA bales is going to accept our silage, hay straw, and grass. Meanwhile, the biogas plant will take our manure, slurry, and the bale cell point will take our pellets. We start with a decent amount of starting equipment. We're going to take a closer look at that here in a little bit. All of it is well maintained. None of it is leased. We do not have any animals at the start. And we do have contracts available here on map go ahead and take a look at this starting equipment we start out with the john deere 8370rt the john deere 8400r so our two tractors range in horsepower from 420 to 450 so we've got some pretty big pretty big power here as far as our tractors go we got a pair of custom lizard warriors in the millennial farmer 
logoed paint scheme, I assume. We've got the John Deere S790 Harvester, and that is paired up with the 625X Rain Header and the 608C Corn Header. We have then a pair of Millennial Pace Setter Wilson trailers, again with the Millennial Farmer logo on the side. We've got the Elmer's Hallmaster Auger Wagon, Coon Performer 4000 Cultivator. We've got the Great Plains YP2425A Cedar slash Planter. So this thing is pretty much going to do it all. We've got the Coon Metris 40102 Sprayer. And we've got the Thunder Creek uh, Fuel Bowser here. And then we move on into the placeables. Now, let's take a look and concentrate on the placeables that we can sell because we can't buy some of these. We can sell the cow pasture. We can sell the pig area. We can sell the pig enclosure. We can sell the horse corral. We can sell the sheep area. Sell the doghouse. Okay. So we have sheep we can sell, horses we can sell, pigs we can sell, and cows we can sell. Important to remember all four of those we can sell. We also have a storage silo. We have a pair of bunkers. We have a workshop, sheds, compact BGA, selling station, farm decoration, American style house decorations there at the biogas plant. Several decorations scattered around the map. And then the street signs. We're going to take a look at those here in a little bit as well as the Millennial Farmhouse. Go here to the animal pens. As far as what can we buy back, well, we can obviously buy the pig enclosure back because it's base game. We can buy the sheep back and the horses back. Can't buy the cows back. So don't sell the cow area unless you really, really don't want the cow area because you're not getting it back. Now let's take a look here under miscellaneous. We've got our BGA. We've got our grain selling station. We have our custom silage bunkers and our storage silo. Decorations. We have our farmhouse. That is the farmhouse down at the pig area. Sheds. We have a few of our custom sheds. And then the farmhouse. We do have a millennial farmer farmhouse. Go around back and kind of just check out sleep trigger and the farm house around the back end. Here we have the sleep trigger. Back. Sliding doors. I don't know. Okay, so, oh, that's interesting. So I loaded this map up with Seasons when I was doing a precursor look. And this pool was covered. But now it's not covered. So I'm thinking that the pool covers and uncovers itself depending on the season. Because I didn't find any sort of trigger to uncover that. Now, if you load this map up in Farm Manager or Start From Scratch, uh, you're going to find that uh, the buildings are here for the most part. Oh, sorry. You're going to find that the buildings are not here. There you go. The buildings are not here on the main farm when you load this up with Start From Scratch or Farm Manager mode, with the exception of the big silo system. Silo system is here. Love it or hate it, it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. So if you hate it, well, you're going to have to live with it. If you love it, well, good for you. Now, what is left, if you load this map up in Farm Manager or Start From Scratch, is we've got some decorative bits. So some trash, some other random things like the Winnebago out there. 
This is over here at the side of the building. That is still here. We can sell it. So that is something that we can sell from the shop or from our garage. So we can get rid of this if we want to. We can also sell the entirety of the pig farm and the entirety of the cow farm and sheep and horses. Go ahead and take a look at some of these buildings. Now, I do know when the map first released for PC, there were some issues with folks that I think played with um, controllers where they couldn't open these doors. I want to show you that. We left-click, open the little door. We go over here to the big door. We can't open that from the outside. We have to go inside. And then from inside, we come up here. Now, this is what might cause controller folks issues take a look at the f1 menu left click turns on the first bank of lights okay right click turns on the second bank of lights and the center mouse button opens the main door You light the roll gate on the roll, roll on the door. Nice animations. So again, middle mouse button, the door, right mouse for the right lights, left mouse for the left bank of lights. Come over here to this door, left click to open that one and close it. And then this door, again, just a standard left click, open. into this door really not, I like these sheds these are really nice sheds come over here to our light switch we again have two banks of lights we have the left click this time for the right lights right click the left lights okay OCD and me is having a problem with that but all right Click to open the doors and left click to open these doors. I'm just showing you talking about the buttons because if you play with controller, then those buttons might be different and basically things might not work for you. Uh, if you're kind of a person who wants to play with the F1 menu down, then you might be stuck. And I kind of want to walk you through how these doors open and close. Now we're kind of at the toy shed, left click. Of one of our Millennial Farmer Warrior Trucks with its custom trailer. Center button. Center button. More lights. Left switch. Center bank of rights. Right. For the left bank of lights, we have another light switch here. Object is too heavy. I don't want to pick it up. I want to turn on the lights. All right, now, I think the first time I did this video, I didn't know where the maintenance trigger was. Right here. But you have to go inside the office area, through the kitchen, into the office. And then when you're in the office, you'll get your hit the R button. And then you'll get your workshop trigger. Again, center that door. We do have, I mean, this building is really nice. We've got all functional doors. More stuff up here. We've got our harvester headers. 
And the last thing that we're going to talk a little bit about is the silo system. So the silo system is going to, could be could be a video all on its own. I'm not a giant fan of this silo system. I think it's just overly complex just for the sake of being overly complex. That's me. Others probably be like, oh my god, it's the best thing ever. Every silo needs to be like this because I play with ultimate realism. Other people be like, WTF, I just want to dump my grain and get it out. So here's how it works. All right, we're in our truck. We got 60,000 liters of corn. But I don't have a dump trigger. Okay? That is because I have to come over here to the panel and I have to do stuff. Okay, first off, I can hit one to load my green directly into the dry silo. I'm not going to do that yet. I can hit three on my number pad. And again, if you play on controller, I don't know what the buttons are going to be. I don't have a controller. I can't play with a controller. I don't like all the buttons on a controller. I get confused because I'm old. Keyboard is where I'm at. So three to load the wet silo. Four to unload dry silo. Six to unload the wet silo. And two to activate course play mode. Just hit two. So we get a little, little course play icon up there. Now, what's so important about course play mode? Well, you know, course play for PC. You can automate your automate your workers. And basically, you can have them set up a course to come and unload here at your bins. But now I have an unload trigger. Great. So now I can unload. If we take a look here at our prop. We've got 13,000 liters of corn. If I unload, quantity is going down. The corn is going up. Good deal. Now that I have emptied, I want to load my grain and sell it. I pull up, I hit R, nada. Nothing. Nothing's happening. Nothing. That's because course play mode doesn't give you your unload trigger. Okay. Let's go around the side here. I haven't tried this. This is this right this right at this very moment is a little unscripted. Force play mode. I like how we've got the animation down there. And then also up here. Okay. So with course play mode enabled, this is your simple silo out. Okay. Force play mode. Dump at the grate. Silo, get your grain out at the yellow auger. Check this auger. This auger doesn't do anything yet. Okay. Go over here. We have buttons. Unload dry silo, we hit four. Okay, we hear some stuff kick in. Now we can start filling, and we can finish filling our corn. Because course play mode dumps grain in the dry silo. Important to know this. Now, let's go back to the start of the silo. Still have course play mode enabled. But you know what? I don't want no stinking course play mode. I want a real farm. 
I don't want to ever use real augers. I got to turn things on and off. I got to flip them around. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to unload into our wet silo. So we're going to hit keypad six. Lights up. Gonna jump in our truck. Oops, I hit the wrong button because I'm dumb. We want to load our wet silo. We hit three. Okay, so we hit I. We're unloading our corn again. We take a look here. The top was our dry silo. The bottom is our wet silo. Important to remember this distinction. Bottom is wet, top is dry. Now we have unloaded our corn into our wet silo. We could hit unload wet silo. Okay. And that would give us the trigger. Get our corn. We actually already did that. So that's why that is showing up. Now, go in here. What do we do? What's the deal with wet? What's the deal with dry? Well, these things right here, if you don't know what these things are, these are called dryers. And they are used to dry your grain. If it is too wet out of the field, you can dry it here and then put it in your silo for better storage. Because you can only sell your grain within a certain range of percentage, moisture percentage. Now, we come in here, what is this? Transfer wet to dry. Yes, I do want to. Thank you very much. So we're going to hit five. For a little bit of delay. Panel lights up. We hit E to enter our vehicle. Then we hit R. To start filling. And now we're going to basically transfer our wet corn into our dry silo. Look. It's going down. Going up, we're transferring grain from wet to dry. Imagine we're drying our corn. That's what we're doing here. We're drying our corn. And the process is now done. We're going to eat, get out of here. And then the whole thing is just going to reset after a little bit of time lapse. Then we can come into here. Whoops, sorry. Then we can come into here and we can hit unload dry silo four. Get back in our truck. We can hit R. We can hit our corn. And presto, now we're pulling corn out of the main silo. So that is the Millennial Farmer silo in, oh my gosh, about 10 minutes as quick as I can figure out how to demo it. Again, if you hate it, too bad, you're stuck with it. If you love it, good for you. But course play mode is where it's at for the guy that wants it just basic. Let me dump, let me fill, let me go about my life and play my game. So course play mode, you dump there, you get it out of the yellow auger. is a trigger over here. I haven't been able to figure out what this does yet. There is a trigger here. Oops, sorry. Wrong. A booted. The trigger here, but when I walk up to it, it doesn't give me anything. All right, so let's go ahead and get ready for that fly around. We'll fly around the map, take a look. We'll land down at the shop, get our Mahindra, and drive around to the various cell points. And then we'll call her a day. Do a little bit of altitude here. So we've got field three directly in front of us. That is the only field that we own at the start. Field four is the grass area right down there. Let's go ahead and just kind of spin so the map is basically using the infinity border technology to give you that sense 
everything just keeps going and going and going. Well beyond the play area. Here we have field one, which is kind of the grass area there. Go ahead and come down here to the south to the pig farm. And again, as I said in the video, the pig farm, you can sell 100% and make this a completely empty area. You can then build out however you should so wish. Going on to the south, we have our small biogas plant. Now the biogas plant does not have any silage bunkers. Now, oddly enough, when I sold, I thought I sold all of the buildings in the garage. And in the garage, we have... Compact BGA. Let's sell it. See what happens. Okay, it did go away. All right, so I was just mistaken in my first kind of precursory look around the map. Basically, I was having a problem. I could sell the decoration. I could sell the fencing around the biogas plant. What a reason I couldn't sell the biogas plant. Uh, let me see if I can put it back. At least just for the purpose of... Of course, I don't have enough money. Do now. Tell me I don't have enough money. Don't own the land. But I do. I do own this land. It says I own it right here. Mm. Did we find a problem? Promptude problem finding. All right, let's continue on. Wish I could show you the BGA at this point, but can't put it back down. It's massive field. So we've got the big lake. And I don't know why we can buy the lake, but we can. Now, overall, the lake does have collisions. In theory, keep you from going too far into the lake. But there is, is a secret. A secret. Just like Indiana and the uh, Holy Grail. What was that movie with the Sean Connery and the Holy Grail? We have a secret walkway, and we can walk out here to Little Island and pay homage to the house shrine. If we do get high enough, we can go over the collision. Here we are coming up to the horse, sheep, and cow farm. You have a water trigger right here at this pump house. We're going to take a closer look at this with our drive around, but we have the horse pin. We can sell this. We can buy it. We have the bunkers. We can sell and buy those. Uh, we can sell and buy the farmhouse. We can pretty much sell and buy everything you see here. This is the grain sell point that we can sell. Now, interesting enough, then this is the silo that we can sell. Now, inside of this building is a bale, the bale sell point. The CCA bales is inside this building. We can sell the building, but we 
forever have the trigger. So the trigger is like between, it's right here. Literally centered on this beam. Go ahead and take a look at it. Right there, you can see it. So we can sell the building, but the trigger remains. If you accidentally sell it, don't worry, you can still sell Bayless. Here is the cow area that we can sell, but we cannot buy again. And then we have the sheep area that we can sell and buy. There is this area over here is kind of called the swamp. Because we can sell the swamp decorations, which is this area right here. Just beside this cow farm area, we do have the dairy. Here. Then we'll continue up the western border of the map. We have the playable side. Then we have the map border and its infinity border. Along this road, we do have some more decorations that we can sell out of the garage if we want to do something completely different here. Coming up to the spinnery, the sawmill, fuel trigger, we have our fuel pump, we have the spinnery. A log cell point, a wood chip cell point. And then we're going to continue up the northern edge of the map. This road is basically the northern edge of the map. Maybe a look down across the entire play area. There's that small forested area I talked about during the intro. And then the bulk of the rest of the cell triggers, including the farm shop, are up here. Some of it is inside the play area. Some of it is outside the play area. And to be quite frank, this is probably what caused a few of the here today, gone tomorrow, here today, gone yesterday, um, re 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 releases of the map. So a big issue was people getting outside, being able to leave the map border right here. That is literally the map border right there, where we go from high texture to low texture textures, or high res to low res textures. Now we have science. And that goes back to the garage where we can sell the signs. You are now leaving the map. Stay on the road. Do not go off the road. So what was happening was folks were going off, they were basically trying to beeline where they wanted to go and they were getting stuck in basically invisible collision wall hell they couldn't figure out how to get anywhere because they were stuck between a bunch of invisible collisions so now we've got some signage try to guide people to where they need to be driving keep them out of where they shouldn't be driving and we are off the map border now ignore what the pda says uh, and the reason we have no growth here, we just have painted ground, is because, well, you can't have foliage out here outside the map border. We have, we have basically trees and shrubs, okay? It's not foliage from the standpoint of we can't have things growing. a little bit of altitude here and we're going to take a closer look at all of these areas here in a moment you have more of those very important signs along this road to basically communicate to players hey you're outside the road boundary of the map 
You don't have free reign. You can't drive anywhere you want. So be careful and basically go where we tell you you need to go. Otherwise, well, dire consequences will happen. So it's an interesting little gimmick. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it a gimmick. An interesting little gimmick. And lucky here. Nice little trick we got going on here. We have animated animals here at the animal dealership. Nice. So that's something else that's interesting. We didn't see these animals. I did not see these animals when I was loading up in seasons. These guys must only come out at certain times of the year if you have seasons. It's great. Love seeing animated animals. More folks need to do this as opposed to either having empty animal areas or the absolute worst, static animals. We're going to take a closer look at this area here in a wee little bit. We are back here at the farm shop. Infamous Millennial Farmer map John Deere dealership. Come on in the front door here. Ah, they open up the door for us because we are that VIP. Quit flying, man. John Deere dealership. We've got all our official John Deere parts. When you buy into the John Deere ecosystem, well, you are in the John Deere ecosystem. Sell some. Grease, John Deere Grease. So your shop trigger is right here at the center. You also have Millennial Farmer pickup truck. I didn't even see that earlier. And we come back here to the maintenance dealer shop. Here we have our vehicle spawn point. And then further down here, we have our repair trigger. So our repairs are done here. And then our activation is right here for a buy, sell, customize, and trade. Now, let's talk to you a little bit about this. So in a previous release of this map, you also had a telehandler here, I believe. But now we just have this. And that is an interesting little tool. It is the telehandler to cutter adapter. So what this does is it allows you to have a telehandler and pick up harvester headers and move them around. And that is already here at the shop. So that will help you kind of get things loaded onto header trailers and out of the shop doors. Again, we have our buttons. Activate, left click to open the doors. One, two, and then a big bay door here in the back. And then we do have fuel around the back also. pump now I don't really know what this is and this might be some sort of inside millennial farmer joke Head on over here to the. Oh no, let's let's detour. So there is a train that runs through here every so often. It is kind of a European modeled 
train as opposed to the train from Ravenport. We have our dump station here. And again, we have some warning signs. Basically read that if you're using a tipping trailer, make sure you are free from the, basically the doors for tipping because, well, while we have a high roof in here, the header on the door going in and out does have a collision. So you can have some pretty crazy action going on with respect to your your dump if you end up hitting into that. I suspect there were folks complaining about that. Let's head on over here. We'll we'll get to the route. And has to do route. Again, stay on the road. Don't don't get off into the green. You wouldn't drive on someone else's lawn, would you? Makes you think it's right here in Farm Sim. Jeez. All right, so here we are at the route. Take heed of the sign here. It says, "Thank you for your custom." Oh, thank you. Thank you for your custom. Have a nice day. Okay. Come over here. In order to sell at this sell point, we have to activate the trigger. Open the door. And now that we've opened the door, we can sell our root crops. Now, I know probably something that came up in a previous release was that take a look at the sign now this tip covers still open turn and close well there used to be a collision that would pop up here that would prevent you from leaving until you closed it i'm sure folks were like hey i i, I can't get out i'm stuck and you're like well did you close the gate no i didn't close the gate I never closed gates well i think they got rid of the collision it keeps you from leaving but they still have a little sign here we have Clock Brothers Seed, where we're going to be able to buy some bulk seed here at this pipe. Oat, seed, lime, pig food, fertilizer, mixed rations. We get wheat, oats, seed. So we can buy wheat for our chickens, oats for our horses, seeds, lime, pig food for our pigs fertilizer, and mixed rations for our horses. Not our horses, or cows. Then these doors, they do open up, so there's some nice, cool animations here. Now, I'm pretty sure that these two areas were in a different part of the map in the first release, because I do remember kind of giving the map a little grief for how they were set up, and how the roads were set up, and gates, and fences. So down here we have distinct animal areas to load each specific animal, which is pretty cool. Let's get on in here into the animal dealership. And now we are pretty much back in the normal play area of the map, right at the top fringe. So inside of the building, we have pigs and chickens. So we have to open the doors to load. And you'll see, once the door opens enough, we then have our ability to buy animals. Close the door and then back up. We'll see that trigger go away. Open it and it comes back. Now, if you just come up here and hit R, you're going to be able to put any animal in any sheep pit. If you come up here with a trailer, you're only going to be able to load pigs and chickens. Got these animated animals. 
Would love to see that on every map, people. Hint, hint. Suggestion. Around the corner. As we already saw, we have our sheep. We have our sheep buy trigger. We have our cow pasture. Buy our cows. And we have our horse pasture to acquire our horses. That's pigs, chicken, sheep, cows, and horses. We've already seen at a high level the pig farm, the cow, sheep, and horse area you might say to yourself well what about the chickens well right here's the old lady egg farm and I don't know if this is some sort of millennial farmer inside joke um, I don't watch millennial farmer I've never watched a video of this while the description says he's the most popular YouTube farmer I've never watched it myself so you may have heard a little bit of an audio clip there. There's little audio clips and tidbits all over the place. So here we have our animal dialogue for our chickens. <sighs> Preparing myself. Here we have the food trough. Yeah. That was in the first release. It's still here. I, maybe it's a joke that only people that watch his channel will get. I don't know. Alright, so... Shoot across the map. And down to the pigs. While we're heading down there, we'll take a look here. So the map is not flat. It's flat-ish. Not completely flat. Subtle rolling lands. And there are areas that are below the lake there. Now I do know in a previous release that did cause some problems. Because some portions below the water were complaining that you were too far below the water and you are basically going to drown. Here we have the main drive into the Millennial Farmer map farm, the main farm. Continue on down here to the pigs. And as I've said earlier, you can sell everything you see here, should you wish. And this would be a completely open area for you to do whatever kind of decorations you wanted to do. We've got just basically a bunch of old sheds here. And then we have, in my opinion, kind of sad that we kind of have the base game pig area. We've got our slurry point. Got our manure pile. We have straw. We have our water trough. And then we know this is the base game pig area because we have the animal pen extension. Basically, hire a plumber to install the water pipes. And then we have the food trough. 
and the pig buy and deliver area. 300 pigs in this particular pen. I have to say, I think this, this pig area is... This pig farm is kind of more up my alley. Not the biggest fan of those two buildings. I don't know what is going on with that barn. What that brick thing there up there is, but anyway. any rate. Um, but I kind of like the pig farm. I kind of like the pig farm more than the millennial farmer farm because that one just feels kind of sterile and let's double back and we'll cut through here Whoa, what happened here? Like quicksand? This is what I wanted to get to. Road will go around the around the lake. And head over to the animals. I said in the map files there's a ton of audio clips so I'm sure there's little little needle drops all over the map uh, with respect to little custom sound clips doing a little bit of a scavenger hunt and try to find them all Here we are coming up to the water pump, the water house. We have a water trigger here. And we'll come down here and check out the sheep area. Sheep area is a place that we can buy and sell. Wendy Drew Sheep Farm. We have our wool spawn point right there under the awning we have our sheep delivery point here 350 sheep in this particular pen we have the food trough and then the water trough then we activate the animal pen extension mod and that is what the pipes there are representing And everything you see here, including the decorations, they all vanish if you do sell this. Let's just kind of move over here to the cow pasture. And for whatever reason, the cow pasture is not buyable. You can sell it, but you can't buy it. We have our water trough. We have our cow delivery point, 200 cattle. We have our straw and then our food trough. We have our milk trigger. And then this machine is the automatic milk sales machine. That is part of, again, Animal Pen Extension Mod. Uh, you can go in here on PC and basically move this wherever you want. And just place it. But it does help us locate the milk trigger from time to time. Then we have our slurry and manure for our 
cows. Now up the hill here, we then have basically the horse or the cow farm proper. We have our two silage bunkers, which we can indeed sell. We can also sell the fencing that's around them. Bunker one and bunker two. While we're here, let's go ahead and spin around to the horse area. We have our horse dialogue, 16 horses. And in this particular pen, we have the food. We have the water. Now, horses don't do manure. I think this is just decorative myself, but let's just check. So cows, standard stuff, sheep, standard stuff, pigs are standard, chickens are standard, and yeah, horses are standard. head on back over here. I'm not really sure where the sleep period, or not sleep, but the straw is. Just take a quick look here. Straw is inside of here. Here we have the straw trigger. Right there. One of our grain cell points. The other grain cell point is right here. It is a placeable cell point, so we could sell this if we wanted to. Just like we could sell kind of the rest of the farm here. As I mentioned during the fly around, the bale cell point is in this shed over here. And it is literally between this center pole. That ought to be fun. And then we have a grain silo here. We have our dump station and our fill pipe. Corn, wheat, nothing is in this. To buy this farm, we can make use of this silo. And it is just a contemporary silo, but don't think this is your silo dump. That's your cell point. Here we are at the edge of the map, the western edge. We have our dairy cell point here behind the general store. It's going to be where our milk and eggs are sold. And we're almost done. And we're going to motor up the side of the western side of the map. And we can sell this decorative bits if we want to. Still don't understand why people are just randomly walking in the middle of nowhere. And then this is where we're going to end the tour. We have our fuel station right up here so we can get fuel at the shop or over here we have our spinnery for wool and cotton right here then we have hilltop lumber we have our log unload point and the log trigger up there, right behind the Beaver Brothers sign. 
And then we have our big wood chip pile to uh, sell our wood chips. And that, everybody, is the Millennial Farmer map. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of this re-re-re-release? I think they uh, cleaned it up a fair bit from how it was first time around. And until next time, happy farming. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell.